Today we're going to be talking about three relatively long-standing and arguably quite iconic models whose continued existence on the current market has far more to do with fashion and recognizability than actual performance. Please note here that there are a lot of models out there that are all about style as opposed to performance, strollers like the Egg, the Orbit, or some models from Mutsi, for example, which tend to find success only ever among a niche demographic. But what makes these three interesting to me, by contrast, is not only that each has achieved enough widespread popularity to make them the flagship moneymakers of their respective brands, but also that each is either designed in quite a sturdy and competent manner despite a lack of performance, or that they actually had quite legitimate practical merits at launch that have simply become increasingly irrelevant as the market evolved around them. So let's get started then, looking at our first model, the Boogaboo Chameleon, which is still widely sold around the world except in the US, where it's been replaced by the more or less equally style-focused Lynx. Originally launched in 2005 as a more luxurious and multifunctional companion to the Frog and Gecko, the Chameleon acted as Boogaboo's main model all the way up to the release of the Fox in 2018. And, by emerging right into the spotlight of the Frog's success, product placement, and celebrity endorsements, in a way the Chameleon really always was a style purchase, though note that it didn't always lack performance, and in fact, in the early days, the Chameleon offered a smaller, lighter weight, and more maneuverable alternative to umbrella and fixed wheel models. Today, however, there are unfortunately just too many elements with the Chameleon that keep the model from really being competitive on the wider market. Most importantly, that its small front wheels and lack of suspension seriously limit use to smooth terrain, while the terrain wheel accessory accelerates wear. That the model's weak central locking mechanism, the Chameleon's main Achilles heel through all three generations, is still a major flaw reducing longevity. And lastly, that the seat adjustment mechanisms are, at this point, far too fiddly in comparison to the current industry standard for fixed frame setups to be acceptable in my opinion. And yet, the model persists, despite the fact that Boogaboo themselves have both released and discontinued significantly better models during its lifespan. And why this is, if I had to guess, is simply a matter of the fact that the Chameleon boasts a nearly unparalleled degree of product recognition in comparison to the rest of the industry. The recipe sells, and my bet is that Boogaboo is possibly still a bit hesitant to pull it from the market for risk of making something akin to Coca-Cola's textbook mistake in the 80s with new Coke. I could be wrong here, of course, and it's just a matter of too much backstock. Though note that firstly, we are going on two years since it disappeared from the US market, and secondly, they have directly said themselves that the Lynx is not intended to replace any other model. Alright, next up is the Stoke Explory, which actually launched a couple of years before the Chameleon, during the heyday of the Frog, and which both also provided an alternative to the limited selection of stroller options at the time, and was also carefully lubricated into the culture through celebrity endorsements and product placement. Unlike the Chameleon, however, the Explory right from the outset was pretty clearly solely a style purchase, with its single major practical innovation being the ability to lift the seat to a somewhat higher position than the rest of the market. This is a nice characteristic, even today, but it's not the same as what the Chameleon did in entirely rerouting the industry towards models with less weight, smaller folded size, and more maneuverability. Nevertheless, the Explory has still been arguably one of the more successful strollers in the last couple decades, both as a result of its completely unique look and also due to Stoke's wide success in other areas of the childcare market, in particular with furniture, which has given the entire brand a real reputation for quality and style. As far as why the Explory fails to compete with the wider market in terms of performance is concerned, there are several factors involved, all starting with the model's most iconic feature, that long stock which serves as the main body of the chassis itself, which requires a lot of uncommon engineering to pull off, and which functionally doesn't really add anything to the model, it just looks cool, by making the seat seem a little like it's floating. The downsides to this design, though, are that the centralized activation mechanisms take more force to use than on most models, folding the Explory down to trunk size is a many-step process, and also that that central shaft is pretty heavy. In addition, like the Chameleon, the Explory doesn't really have any suspension, and its front wheels are quite small, again limiting the model to smooth terrain, and its storage setup is also not nearly as efficient or spacious as the more common front-to-rear frame basket that most strollers employ. And in the end then, the Explory is really purchased for that cool look, justified by a luxurious child comfort mystique that's been nurtured through the brand as a whole, and despite the fact that the model is not particularly great to drive, to fold, or to carry stuff. Alright, last in our lineup today then is a Cybex Preamp, and before angry gangs of Cybex groupies try to jump me in my commentary feed, please let me state firstly that to claim that the Preamp offers absolutely no performance would be a lie, and secondly that of these three, it does honestly offer the most, both in terms of driving and ease of use. Nonetheless, the Preamp is still most definitely a style-based purchase, both in relation to what it offers for its price and in terms of how it competes with comparable models. The Preamp was launched in 2015, entering a mid-sized market virtually devoid of performance models altogether, and initially it did offer certain practical advantages, at least in comparison to the aging Chameleon. 
Like the Explorer, however, these advantages were not exactly groundbreaking, and the Preem had the added disadvantage of being a newcomer in a well-established market. Cybex had brand recognition for their car seats at that point, but not their strollers, so they decided to buy that recognition, through a massive marketing campaign of celebrities and fashion designers, and an initial floor price that was so ridiculously high in comparison to the competition that it seemed impossible not to assume that some sort of engineering perfection must lie behind the price. Only it didn't. Even at launch, when the surrounding mid-size market was at its weakest, the Preem was only okay. And at this point, during the sort of mini-renaissance among comparable models that we're seeing currently, the Preem falls below the curve, due to having somewhat loose-fitting and rattly components, relatively poor suspension, complex internal mechanisms consisting of small and fragile components, especially in its seat unit, and lastly, a real failure on the part of Cybex to provide anything extra in its guarantee or after-sales service offering that would reflect the model's pricing and purported craftsmanship. And as it stands now then, the Preem is still a model purchased most for its copper piping. But it is worth noting that unlike the Chameleon and Explory, I would say there's a stronger chance with the Preem that its performance may bounce back a bit in the future. Because you see, with a quarter billion dollar a year profit engine of Good Baby International behind them, Cybex is a stroller manufacturer on steroids, releasing far more models each year than anyone else at the top end, rapidly and continuously updating their components and patents, and exploiting every perceived gap in the market everywhere. This year they've already moved into both tandems and chariots, and they can even make you a horse if you feel like it. In any case, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about any of these models, we have standalone reviews for each of them, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find that by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.